Minneapolis cop shoots Australian woman dead. Family members of a bride-to-be are demanding answers after she was shot and killed by a cop on Saturday night. 40-year-old Justine Ruzchek demand called Minneapolis police on Saturday night to report a possible assault in the alley behind her house. According to police, two officers responded to the 911 call and spoke with Demond at the scene. The officer who shot and killed Demond has been named as 31-year-old Mohammed Noor. Demond died of a gunshot wound to the abdomen. The police officers were wearing body cams, but they were not switched on at the time. Ruzchek Demond was from Sydney, Australia, but she also held US citizenship. She originally trained as a veterinarian and most recently worked as a yoga instructor and life coach. She was set to marry her American fiancé next month. Police officer Noor is the first Somali-American cop to serve his community. Pending an investigation into the matter, he has been placed on paid administrative leave, along with the other officer who was at the scene. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Sometimes cops are just too quick to pull the trigger. Undercover detective files lawsuit against lieutenant who shot him nine times. On Wednesday, an Albuquerque police detective who was shot by his own lieutenant in January filed a 77-page lawsuit against him. Albuquerque police detective Jacob Grant was shot nine times by Lieutenant Greg Brackle during an undercover drug operation outside of McDonald's on Central near Tramway. The shooting occurred at around 11 a.m. when Grant, another detective, and two suspected drug dealers were inside a narcotics vehicle in the restaurant's parking lot. According to the lawsuit, every member of a team of officers that was moving in to bust the suspects was actively monitoring the situation as it progressed. The suspects in the car were Edmund Vester and Damian Bailey, who are both black. At the time of the shooting, Grant was sitting in the rear driver's side seat, while another undercover narcotics detective was sitting in the driver's seat. Both are white. One suspect was sitting in the front passenger seat, and the other was sitting in the rear passenger side seat. To avoid a crossfire situation, the narcotics team making the bus was supposed to approach the vehicle from one direction, on the side where the suspects were sitting. But that day, Lieutenant Greg Brackle violated protocol and approached the vehicle from the side where Grant and the other undercover officer were sitting. As the suspects had surrendered or were in the process of surrendering and exiting the vehicle, Brackle opened Grant's door and fired two shots with his personal 45 caliber handgun from a distance of less than five feet. He then repositioned himself and shot Grant seven more times as Grant was already heavily bleeding and trying to crawl away while asking Brackle to please stop shooting. Grant, who was not wearing any body armor, lost approximately 80% of his blood as a result of the shooting. All or almost all of his vital organs were shot or otherwise injured, and he reported additional injuries to areas including his neck, shoulders, arms, and hands. Grant miraculously survived the shooting, but according to the lawsuit, he will need medical care for the rest of his life. The moment a clumsy cop shoots himself in an elevator. Daryl Jewett, a 25-year-old veteran of the Erlanger, Ohio Police Department, injured himself with a handgun after a dinner date with his wife Friday night. For some reason, the off-duty officer draws his weapon while in the elevator with his wife. Jewett then has trouble reholstering the handgun, and the next thing he knows is he's caught lead. Now back this up, let's try to figure out what happened. Jewett nails a couple cop stereotypes here, a box of donuts in one hand and his gun in the other. The most likely scenario seems to be that Jewett was looking for the holster and accidentally discharged the firearm. The bullet entered straight into his belly, sending the officer to the floor. His wife immediately called 911 for help, but this isn't the only possibility for what happened. Cincinnati captain Michael John said the round ricocheted in the elevator before striking Jewett in the stomach. However, it's more likely that a hollow point bullet would have fragmented upon hitting the steel wall. So, Jewett may have been struck by one of the ricocheting fragments. One last possibility that we haven't explored is that Jewett saw his own reflection. A black man with a gun and his police training took over from there. Did you just laugh at a man getting shot? Come on, guys. Detective accidentally kills colleague during gun safety talk. An officer with the Fresno County Sheriff's Department was shot dead this past week. The victim of an errant bullet fired by a fellow law enforcement official. 
On October 31st, Deputy Sergeant Rod Lucas was having a discussion with a detective about gun safety at a police station. Specifically, the two were conversing about their backup weapons and how they carried them. As they were talking, police report that the detective's secondary weapon accidentally discharged. Lucas immediately dropped to the floor, suffering from a gunshot wound to the chest. One of the other officers attempted to perform CPR, but it was no use. Lucas died shortly afterwards. Two officers present at the time said the incident was a tragic accident and no foul play should be suspected. 46-year-old Lucas was a 20-year veteran of the force and leaves behind four children and a grandchild. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Detective killed by friendly fire during suicide by cop shootout. A Maryland police officer was accidentally shot dead by fellow officers while trying to stop a gunman on a shooting rampage. Brothers Michael Malik and Elijah Ford drove to a police station in Prince George's County on Sunday afternoon to initiate a shootout. Michael opened fire at the station, hitting two vehicles and a passing ambulance. His brothers filmed the entire incident, leading authorities to believe Michael intended to be gunned down by police. Officer Jakai Colson found himself in the middle of the gunfight and returned fire to attract the shooter's attention away from the station. Though his actions allowed police to take down the 22-year-old gunman, Colson himself was inadvertently shot dead by a fellow officer. Malik and Elijah Ford fled the scene afterwards but have since been taken into police custody. All three brothers will be charged with second-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and use of a handgun in the commission of a felony, among other charges.